Okay, the recording started. Good morning, each one of you. Thank you for connecting to the class. Let's take a moment to pray, and then we will get started. Could somebody lead us in prayer? Who would like to pray with the class? So it's very quiet here. <laughs> All right. Um, Sally, Sally, Sally Tully, why don't you just pray with the class, please? And we'll start. Thank you, Pastor. Father God, we want to thank you so much for this brand new day. As we begin our day, Lord, and as we start a class, I pray that you will guide us, Holy Spirit. And Lord, Holy Spirit, you open up the eyes of our understanding and also our hearts to be receptive, Lord. Teach us, guide us, Lord. We commit our life, our time into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Once again, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, welcome. And I, for those of you in uh, other parts of the world, uh, maybe it's an evening or maybe it's very early in the morning, but thank you. Uh, for connecting this morning. All right, so we are kind of um, towards the end of uh, this course on our identity in Christ. Uh, we have um, two chapters that we're covering uh, that we have to cover. One is, um, which we started last week, to talk about being one body in Christ. Uh, then we're going to talk about the fact that we are ministers and ambassadors in Christ. And then, we're going to spend some time um, talking about how to live the in Christ life. Uh, what are some of the instructions God has given to us in Scripture to live out of our place in Christ? So in Christ, we are in union with him. We who have been joined to the Lord, we are one spirit with him. Uh, he is the wine, we are the branches, his life flows through us. Uh, and uh, so how do we live out of this place of spiritual union with Jesus Christ in everyday life? Uh, that's, um, that's something we're going to uh, look at. Uh, possibly, hopefully, we'll be able to get into that next week. So today, our goal is to finish two chapters. One is about us being one body in Christ, and then about us being ministers and ambassadors of Christ. So let's talk about um, being one body in Christ. We actually started this uh, last week, uh, covered a few uh, uh, points there. So uh, one being one body in Christ, uh, we said that um, because we are baptized into Christ, or we've been brought into Christ, we have put on Christ. That is, Christ is now seen in and through us. We are, we are clothed with Christ. And in Christ, uh, there is no uh, division. There's no division between races or social stance, or whether you're Jew or a Greek, or whether you're a slave or a free, or male or female. Uh, those are not distinctions. Uh, but we are all one in Christ. And, uh, and uh, we saw that also in Colossians 3.11. And therefore, when we uh, consider each other, uh, we uh, regard no one according to the flesh. That means, you know, while we do recognize, uh, you know, each one's personal identity and so on in the natural, uh, we don't let that be the dominant uh, factor in our relationships. We regard no one according to the flesh, but rather we relate to each other as new creation in Christ. And God is gathering all of us together in one in Christ, in him. And we saw this, that uh, what, what, is, what are the implications of this? What, what does it mean? One, it means that being in Christ, we are God's dwelling place, God's temple. And um, so we keep the temple holy, each one of us. Um, we are... God's uh, dwelling place and this powerful passage from Psalm 132 
uh, we went through uh, where God, where it tells us what God does when he dwells among his people. And we also talked about the fact that uh, we uh, establish God, we as the house of God, as the temple of God, we establish God's presence and it destabilizes the works of the enemy wherever we are. We also talked about the fact that because we are, all of us are in Christ as pe God's people from different parts of the world, we are all in Christ. This communion or this partaking of one bread of the bread and the cup is an expression of, of course, it's an expression of many things, but it's specifically, it's also an expression of the fact that we are one bread and one body. That means we are one in Christ. So when we partake of the communion, we are, of course, receiving the blessings of the cross of Christ. We are receiving everything God, the Lord has provided for us through his blood and his body. But we are also expressing we are one body, one bread and one body in Christ. And that's why that, that, that partaking of the Lord's table, the communion is so powerful. So that's where we stopped last Sunday, last Sunday, last week. Uh, we're going to pick up from 117, 0.117. So in Christ... Because you and I are in Christ, we are part of his body. So what does that mean? It means we are a member in that body. By member, we mean a functional part of that body. So Paul uses the term members to refer to, you know, these functional parts, these hands, these eyes, the fingers, the nose, the eyes, the ears, the feet. Uh, some are internal organs, some are these external limbs that we can see. Uh, but what he, what the analogy Paul, uh, the, Paul uses the human body as an analogy. And he uses that to tell each one of us that because you are in Christ, you're part of his body, that means you are a functional part. You're a member in the body. That means God gives you grace. He gives you function in the body. And that's given to each one of us. He gives grace, he gives gifts, and he gives function to each one of us. So let's please read this passage from Romans 12, verses 4 through 8. Somebody could read that out loud for us, please. Romans 12, 4 to 8. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who so shows mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So, what is Paul teaching us? You see, all of us, are in Christ, therefore we are part of his body. We are members of his body, that is, we are parts of his body. And uh, as members in one body, all the members have some function. Now, all members don't have the same function, but all members do have some function. So that's the first thing. You and I must understand that being in Christ means we are part of his body. You're a member of his body. And that means you have some function in the body. That means you have some purpose, some, some role to play in the body. So he says, so we, 
though we are many, that means we are all different, we are diverse, we are one body in Christ. So that's what we've been studying about, in Christ. So we are one body in Christ. And individually, each one of us are members. We are parts of this body and of one another. That means we are here to serve one another. And then what he says is, having then gifts. So each one of us have been given gifts by God, by the Lord. So each one of you have been given gifts. And these gifts differ according to the grace that is given to us. That means he's given you gifts. That means the ability to do things. Plus there is grace, which is the empowering on your life. So what must you do? You must recognize you have a function. God has given you gifts and he's given you grace in Christ. So each one of us have a function. You have gifts and grace in Christ. And what does God want us to do? He, want us, he wants us to use them. Now, there are, di you know, there are different kinds of gifts, different kinds. Uh, so uh, here is just a small list. He talks about prophecy, talks about ministering or serving, talks about teaching, talks about exhorting and encouraging people, talks about giving or generosity, talks about leadership. He talks about mercy or compassion. So like this, there are just a numerous gifts. This is not a complete list. He's just saying, you know, whatever you've been given, use it. Now, uh, the gifts listed here in Romans 12, 4 through 8, are different from the gifts listed in 1 Corinthians 12. In 1 Corinthians 12, we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, uh, which is available for all believers. Those same nine gifts are operational or available to be operated through every believer. Whereas in Romans 12, we're talking about what we refer to as functional gifts or membership gifts. That means these gifts are associated with your place in the body. The gift of the Spirit, which is in 1 Corinthians 12, is just related to the fact that the Holy Spirit is at work in each of us. Whereas these gifts in Romans, in Romans 12 talk about our functional gifts, meaning depending on where God has placed you in the body and the gifts he's given you, you have a, you know, you have a function, you have gifts and grace, and God wants us to use them, right? So we have many members. All of us are members of that body, but we all have many functions or different functions in the body. So what uh, we must understand is that each one of us have a function. We have gifts, we have grace, and we must use them in Christ, in the body. Now, uh, it takes some time for many of us to discover what is our function in the body, right? So um, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, usually we tell people, you know, you try out different things. You do you do this, you just serve, just start doing things and uh, in, in the body. Uh, and then you will find out, you know, what are, you, what are the gifts given and what is the grace on your life? Now, all these three are interrelated. The gifts and the grace are related to your function. That's what God, what the Lord wants you to do in the body. If you don't have those gifts and the grace, then let's not, you know, that, that function is not for you. But the function in the body is related to the gifts and the grace the Lord has put in your life, right? So it takes a little bit of time for us to recognize the gifts we have and the grace that's on our life. And that helps us understand our function, what he wants us to do, right? And you saw here that there are different kinds of functions. You know, uh, uh, it is, you know, for example, think about leadership, he who leads. So, you know, leadership itself is so diverse, meaning you can lead a small group. You can lead a group of 50 people. You can lead a group of 100 people. Or you can lead a group of 1,000 people. So, you know, all of them have leadership. But the degree of the gift and the grace vary in each one of those uh, 
examples that we mentioned. It's the same gift of leadership, but the grace and the gift, the, the, the degree of that grace and gift varies. Think about teaching, right? Uh, again, teaching. You can teach you know, a small group of two, three people. Uh, you can teach a group of 50 people. You can teach a group of 100 people. Or you can teach a group of 1,000 or more people. It's the same teaching function, but the degree of gift and grace varies on each person. And that the Lord gives according to you know, what he has determined. And so uh, even though the teaching function is the same, the degree of the gift and the grace is different. So what must we do? We must recognize that we can grow in our gifts and grace. Right? We can grow. So a person who starts off teaching, you know, five people, if they are faithful in using the gift and the grace in that teaching function, if they're faithful, then the Lord will, you know, expand their influence. To, they can start teaching maybe, you know, 50 people. And, and as they're faithful in that, and they grow in the gift and they grow in the grace, he can expand that to a hundred or a thousand or more, you know. So uh, uh, the, that, that same teaching function uh, the gift and the grace can grow. And also the same teaching function can be expressed in different ways. For instance, you can teach uh, by just sitting with people and sharing the word with them. Or you can teach, you know, through the printed page. Or you can teach through, you know, by the blogs people write. Because the, the expression of the teaching gift can be in so many different ways. Or people can teach, you know, these days on video, on audio. Um, there are just so many ways of expressing that gift. It doesn't always have to be, you know, uh, uh, just the one way of speaking. Speaking is one way of teaching, but you can also teach through your writing. You can teach through uh, several other mediums, right? So that same gift can vary. So you think about leadership. Uh, you know, the leadership gift can be expressed in so many ways. Somebody could, uh, an entrepreneur is a leader. He, he's a leader in the area of business. Uh, 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 somebody could be a lead researcher. You know, uh, he's leading a team of researchers, but God gives him gift and grace to do that. Uh, somebody could be leading in, you know, in a, a leading a team of, you know, uh, architects to build a building. Well, that leadership there, that gift, um, and grace is, is something given to that person by God. Or somebody could lead, um, you know, a team of pastors. Well, that leadership gift is given by God. So the same gift of leadership can, can operate in different, you know, in different, um, or can be expressed in so many different ways, right? So what am I saying? I'm saying that, uh, there are these functional gifts. Uh, there are different kinds of functional gifts. Uh, there are different uh, degrees of that same functional gift. Um, people can grow in their functional gift. There are different expressions of that same functional gift. And God gives you know gifts and grace uh, to each of us to fulfill that function in the body. And uh, we must all use them. Uh, for, for the glory of God, right? So each one of you, uh, I just want to encourage you, take your time, uh, discover, you know, what is your function? Uh, what are the gifts and grace God has put in your life? Because that those gift, the gifts and grace define your function. Be faithful and uh, using your gifts and grace towards that function. Then as you use it, you will grow in it. And the Lord will teach you, you know, in what ways you can express that uh, those gifts in grace, and it will be different. We don't have to uh, always be like somebody else. Uh, you express the gifts and grace on your life the way God wants you. All right. Now, the other part of the belonging to the body of Christ is that uh, we must understand that being part of the body. And serving in the body means that we serve together with other people who are also in the body uh, because all of us have been given gifts, grace, and function in the body. And so Paul once again brings this out in 1 Corinthians 12, talking about our functional gifts. 
uh, he once again uses the analogy of the human body. Uh, this is a lengthy passage, but I just want us to read it so we really get the um, yeah get the uh, the full Im the full uh, uh, impact of what uh, the apostle Paul wants to convey to us here. So could somebody read this for us? First Corinthians twelve, verses twelve to twenty seven. I'll I'll scroll as you read. You can start here in verse twelve. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the all were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would be the body, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these which on these we bestow great honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Amen. Thank you. So uh, I, I realize this is a, a long passage, but the main, you know, we can just, just highlight some of the key points uh, that God is speaking to us through the Apostle Paul. So he's saying, look, you're all in Christ. So you all belong to the same body. Each one of you are members, individual members of this body. And God says, I want you to understand that in this body, there are different kinds of members. There's the eye, there's a hand, there's a ear, uh, you know, uh, there's a feet. Uh, and then there are bodies, uh, parts of the body that are internal that, you know, nobody can see. Um, uh, so, uh, so there are many parts in this body. And each one of us have been placed in the body just where God pleased. That means the function that God has given each one of us God saw that that was the best function for us. So, you know, we don't have to, uh, you know, be anxious or, you know, become jealous of somebody else. God, why didn't you give me that person's function? You know, no, we don't even need to think like that because the Bible says God has set each one of us in our place just as he pleased. So when you are in the place God has set, you're going to be pleasing to God. But if we try to wander out of our place and try to get into somebody else's place, then you know what? We are displeasing to God. So, you know, be happy with the function that God has given you and with the gifts and the grace he's put upon your life because with that function he's given you gifts and grace. So having understood that each one of us are different members in the body, that means we have different functions, gifts and grace in the body. God says, don't look down on other functions. Don't say the whole body is the eye. No. If the whole body were an eye, what about the hearing? So the whole body is not just you, or not just one kind of function. So therefore, don't, let us not try to force 
our function onto other people, saying everybody must be like me. No, there are different parts, different members, and so we all have different functions. Secondly, we must honor each other. You know, so regardless of our function, we just honor each other. Recognize, you know, some may have very prominent functions. They may be very visible. Uh, some functions may not be visible at all. They may be behind the scenes. Uh, they may be like the internal organs, yet they are very vital. See, nobody sees the heart uh, pumping. And nobody sees the lungs that breathe. But, you know, these internal organs are so important. So like that, there could be people who are have very, you know, vital functions, but they are not very visible. So just because they're not visible doesn't mean they are not vital, right? So God says, uh, you know, you honor each other. Honor the, uh, every member, whether visible or not, whether prominent or not. Honor every brother, every uh, other member in the body for the function they bring, right? And so uh, we uh, serve together. So if one of us suffers, we suffer. Uh, we rejoice with those who rejoice. We suffer with those who suffer. That means we are together in this as part of the body. And uh, so we recognize each other. We honor each other. We celebrate each other. And uh, we, you know, we go together in the soul uh, because we are part of that one body. Okay. Um, let me just go, uh, maybe finish this, and then we will take up uh, questions in relation to this. The other part that we must understand as being part of the body of Christ is that collectively we represent Christ in this world. Uh, so uh, the, a local church, uh, the believers together represent Jesus in that area. Uh, so there are many local churches around and every local church is part of the body of Christ. Every believe believers and uh, uh, believers in all local churches are part of the body of Christ. And we represent Christ to the world, right? So uh, uh, in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, he says, um, you know, God has put everything under Christ's feet, given him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So the church is Christ's body, and it is a completeness of him. And he fills every part of the church thoroughly with himself. And so the body represents the head. See, so the body executes what the head directs. So head is like the, uh, the command center. And then the hands and the feet and the body does what comes to the head. So we are representing Christ here on earth. We are his body. We are his hands, his feet. We do what he tells us to do and what he wants done here on earth. And uh, uh, similarly, we must learn uh, to honor ch other churches. You know, it's very interesting that um, Paul talks about churches being in Christ. In Galatians 1.22, he says, I was unknown by faith to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. So he's saying the churches of Judea, that means the churches, there were many churches in the region of Judea. And he says, they, these churches were in Christ. Same thing in 1 Thessalonians 2.14. He says, uh, he talks about the churches of God which are in Judea, that is in that region or the district of Judea, in Christ Jesus. So it's very interesting, you know. Uh, he's talking about churches, referring to whole communities of believers, right? Uh, that means uh, there are they're, they're many believers. These local churches, Paul says they are in Christ. So not only do we recognize other individual believers who are in Christ, we also recognize local churches as being in Christ. So therefore, we honor local churches. Right? We don't speak low of them. 
we don't, you know, judge and criticize local churches. No, we honor the local churches of believers, communities of believers who are in Christ. Now, keep in mind that uh, local churches uh, may have their own form of worship and expression of faith, uh, believers. So, you know, they may sing and worship in different languages. They may, their style of music may be different. Uh, the way they may worship may be different. Uh, the way the community functions may be slightly different. Uh, and the way the, the style of preaching and ministry also may be different. So they may have their own, you know, unique ways of expressing their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But as long as they are believers in Jesus Christ, as long as they are all saved and born again, those local churches are in Christ Jesus. And we need to honor them and respect them uh, in that manner. So uh, understand that being one body in Christ means that we all have functions. Uh, we all have a place in the body. We respect each other's functions. Uh, we represent Christ wherever he has placed us collectively. And we also honor other churches that are in Christ. So let me pause here and see if um, there are any questions. Uh, is everyone with me so far on this? Any questions? Everyone's good. All right. Okay. Okay. If you have a question, please go ahead. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, so my question is from Ephesians 4, mm -hmm. uh, where, um, yeah, from 15 and 16, uh, like it says, um, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Mm. So um, uh, I, I was just trying to understand the phrase uh, written here, like uh, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Mm. Um, so my, um, uh, uh, suppose my gift in grace, someone else uh, in the body of Christ is, uh, is someone else dependent on this? That's, that's what I wanted to understand. Is someone else mm -hmm. dependent on uh, what God has uh, gifted uh, in terms of my spiritual gift? The answer is yes. Yeah. God... Uh, we are all dependent on each other's functions and gifts and grace. Uh, dependent in the sense, God has put us in the body so that we can minister to one another, serve one another, bless and enrich and strengthen each other. Uh, not, not uh, uh, so when we use the word dependent, um, uh, it is in the right sense, meaning we are here to, you know, enrich each other and, bless each other and strengthen each other and serve each other, give into each other's lives spiritually and so on. Uh, but not dependent, not in the sense of, oh, you know, if that brother or that sister fails in fulfilling their function, it's the end of me or somebody else. No, it's not like that, right? Because ultimately, Christ fills his body with himself and he's got so many people. So let's say, for example, I'm going through a difficult time and uh, God wants to minister to me through person A at that given time. But person A at that given time, you know, fails to reach out to me or fails to, uh, for whatever reason, maybe they are busy, maybe they, you know, God is speaking to them saying, hey, you know, reach out and help that person, but they fail to do it. Well, God may use person B 
or person C to step in and minister to me, right? So the answer to your question is yes. God wanted person A to supply into my life, to minister to me at that point. But maybe they were too busy or they just couldn't hear God or didn't want to do it, whatever. But then God will use somebody else in the body to reach out and minister. So that's why we are a body. Uh, we need to be attentive. We need to be serving, uh, using our functions. But uh, it's not, you know, um, quote unquote, life threatening. If one person fails, uh, uh, God will use, you know, somebody else in the body. But uh, we must also understand and recognize that some people have been given such, uh, and I use the word, quote, unquote, again, I use it in quotes, such important or such influential place in the body that if they make a mistake, they do something wrong, it could hurt a big part of the body. And I'm talking especially about leadership, right? So when in the body, God has placed leaders, people in leadership, which means he has graced them with influence in the body. And that's because he wanted, he wants to do something through them to bless many people. That's what influence is. It's God's grace upon a person to influence many people, to bless many people. So that's leadership. And so in the body, there are people who have leadership. Now, if that person whom God has graced with tremendous influence and the gift that goes with that to actually bless so many people, if that person messes up, does something wrong, the blessing that he was intended to bring to so many people could now become something very painful for people because of you know what he does. So that's why um, we need to be very careful. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Pastor. Thank you so much. Good. Welcome. Any other questions related to what we've just covered? All right. So. I just want to encourage each of us, you know, um, wherever God has placed you, I want you to, you know, just start using your gift. Let me just share a little small testimony and that, you know, uh, so when I go back into my early teenage years, um, there was a time and, and nobody told me to do this, but it just, you know, I, I just, there was just a, uh, an inclination um, that I wanted to, you know, bless other believers. So I'm talking, you know, when I was about in my early teenage years, so maybe around 14, 15, around that age. And uh, I used to write little postcards or sometimes uh, on little pieces of paper. I used to write letters and I used to just post it to other believers whom I met. So when I meet a believer in those days, you know, there, there was no email or WhatsApp or instant messaging or FaceTime, or in fact, uh, 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 even the phone was, was not that easy. We had those rotary phones and every house didn't have a phone on, you know, some houses had phones, so, you know, so the main mode of communication was, you know, if you want to be write letters. So uh, I remember in those days uh, when I meet a believer, I feel like, you know, I, 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 God wants me to minister to this person on. So I would just, hey, can you give me your address? And I'll take down their address. Then I would make it a point uh, every week to write a few letters to people. And so I would take a postcard and I'd say, Father, I, I want to write a note for this person, this brother. God, give me a word for that person. And I'll just listen, you know, and uh, God would inspire a verse of scripture or a, a thought, you know. So basically, it's like me giving a word for that person. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to tell him that says, Lord, anything, but I just pray. And what about 
feel the Holy Spirit prompts, I'll write it down on that postcard or on that piece of paper, on the letter. Then I'll send it to them. So I started doing that, you know, and uh, when people would, you know, sometimes people write back or sometimes when I meet them later, they would say, hey, that, that really blessed me, that ministered to me. So we just keep doing that. Then uh, I was also studying the Word of God. So I sort of felt, I felt like I should write messages, you know, write messages. And in those days, we didn't have photocopying machines, uh, but we had, uh, 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 you know, um, these were called cyclostyle machines. They, they were manual machines by which you make copies. So I would handwrite a message, then I would take it to a typist, um, somebody who knew how to type, they used typewriters. We didn't have computers in those days. So it's like going back a long time. We're talking about uh, the early 80s, uh, mid 80s. And um, uh, so the type, the typist would uh, type what I had handwritten onto this kind of, they called it stencil. They would type it onto the stencil and they would make hand copies. So I would say, I need, you know, 50 copies of this. I need 100 copies of this. So it usually be one page. But to do that one page, probably take a day or, you know, take several hours to do one page. And then they would make copies. So to do those copies would take like a day, so on. So I'd get my, you know, 50 copies or 100 copies of that letter. Then I would fold it put it in envelopes, stick stamps, and send it out. So I had my own little mailing list. Uh, and this was just to bless people. And then when I went to college, engineering college, uh, I continued doing this. But now, you know, I would write maybe two pages or three pages and get that same thing done, get it all copied. We may make 100 copies uh, and give it out to the students, you know, and just, just as a way to bless them. So... You know, I just said, God, uh, 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 you know, I, I was not like trained in writing or anything, but I just started doing this. I just felt I should do this. And I said, God, you know, uh, you've given me this grace to do it, this gift to do it. I'll just be faithful. And then uh, when I was in the U.S. Uh, studying uh, during those years, of course, by those day, by that time, we had computers and we had word processors and uh, printers and all that. And we had uh, Kinko's where I could go and get things Xeroxed. Uh, so technology had come in. So I would write, uh, this time I would write maybe six pages of, uh, of uh, a teaching, uh, you know, and then get them printed Xeroxed. And I would send it out to people in the US and I would also send it to India. And I had made arrangements with somebody in India who would make copies and send it out to people in India. By the time the number of people on our mailing list grew, you know. So this was, I felt like, okay, God, this is a way that I can minister to people. You know, and I meet people today who remember, and they still have copies of those letters that I wrote back in the 90s. And they say, you know, I still have copies with me. They, it, this, this message came to me at a time I really needed it. You know, so this was back in the 90s. And it was you know, just something I thought I could minister to people. Uh, and then when we got back to India um, in 2000, uh, I started writing books. That means I took all of this thing and started putting them in books. But I said, you know, uh, I'm going to make the books free. We are going to make the books free. We are not going to charge. We're not going to write books to make money. We're going to write books to bless the body of Christ. And so we started printing books and we started, you know, just sending out books and then we started getting them translated uh, and then uh, printing it and distributing it across India. Um, and then, you know, then with, with the website and the internet, we started putting these PDF books online. And uh, uh, literally today, you know, we, we, we have, uh, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands of downloads of books today. And they are translated into so many languages, and they are all free. Uh, we have, uh, I think, people from over 100 countries. I don't know, maybe like 100, 135 countries or 145 countries, who come to our website and use these resources. And uh, the books are, you know, 
going out both in digital as well as in print format, print we distribute in India. Uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of thousands of copies of different books have gone out. You know, but how did it all start? It started by writing simple postcards to encourage friends. And today it's like more than a hundred countries and it is just, just blessing so many, many people. So what I want to share with you, with, with us is, you know, whatever gift and grace God has put in your life, whatever it is, maybe a simple thing. You know, nobody, I was not trained in writing. I didn't go to, you know, I was just, just started with what I had, started in a very small way, uh, but just faithful in that. And today, you know, God is just, just using it to bless so many people. Uh, there are pastors who write to us and say, you know, we're using your books uh, in teaching our people. There are, you know, different contexts, uh, prayer groups, churches that are using it to train people. Just, just so many things happening through the books uh, uh, that, that, you know, is just unimaginable. But it started in a very small way. So whatever gift God's given you, whatever grace God's given you, start using it. Even if it's a small way, start be faithful in it. Don't worry about becoming rich and famous and glamorous and all that. Don't worry about it. Be faithful. And the principle of the kingdom is this. If you're faithful in what's little, he will set you over much. So that's the law of progression in God's kingdom. Start small. Be faithful in small things. And then God in his way and in his time will promote that, you know, and uh, he will open up the doors. And so the Bible says increase comes from God. And the increase we want is the increase that comes from God, not the increase that is man-made. Because man-made increase will disappear. But the increase that God gives, that will last through time. Right. So just use what God has given you, uh, however small, whatever the gift, use it and God will bless it to bless many people. Okay. All right. So hope that encourages each of us um, and uh, let's be faithful in using what God's given to us. Okay. So we're going to take a little break now and um, uh, we'll, We'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, we'll pick up the next lesson, which is talking about ministers and being ambassadors. Uh, we will pick up that lesson uh, right after the break. Okay, so we'll see you all in 10 minutes. Thank you. God bless.